You're listening to the Unsure Entrepreneur Podcast with Roger Pierce. Whether you're scribbling business ideas on a napkin or wrestling with the should I, shouldn't I question, get ready to explore the realities, the risks and the rewards of entrepreneurship as we share the stories, scars and successes of small business owners. Hello there and welcome to the Unsure Entrepreneur Podcast. My name is Roger Pierce and I'm happy to welcome a very special guest today. Cassie Conte is a program manager for the Brock Link at Brock University, where she leads the development and delivery of entrepreneurship, innovation, and creativity programs. She has over 11 years of experience in supporting entrepreneurship initiatives and holds a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Toxicology from the University of Guelph and an MBA from Brock University. Now, Brock Link is Brock University's hub for innovation, entrepreneurship, and commercialization. It offers a range of programs, events, and mentorship opportunities designed to support early stage entrepreneurs and help them transform their ideas into viable businesses. By working with university departments and community partners, Rocklink creates a vibrant ecosystem that nurtures creativity, encourages collaboration, and drives economic growth within the Niagara region and beyond. Welcome, Cassie. Thanks for having me, Roger. Super excited to talk to you here today. So listen, let's kick it off. You know, I'm a big believer in entrepreneurship education because I think learning and knowledge is at the heart of business success. I've read a stat the other day that said over 44% of entrepreneurs have a post-secondary education, right? So sure, there's trial and error. You can start a business and figure it out on, on the way, but that can be expensive. And as we just talked about, risky, a lot of perils to entrepreneurship. And it's very time consuming to try to figure it on your own. So education and entrepreneurship and what you're doing at Link really gives entrepreneurs a leg up. And I'd rather see them, you know, come into business with your kind of training and support. So can you tell us more about Brock Link and what you guys are doing there? Sure. So, so yeah, as you mentioned, the, the Brock Link, we're really the university's hub for innovation, entrepreneurship, creativity. And we also have some, some team members on our team who focus on the research partnership and commercialization aspect. And so the programs and activities that we run are for our students, alumni, faculty, staff, as well as the community. So we try to make our programs really accessible to anyone who's looking to learn about entrepreneurship or get support with their with their business idea. We focus a lot in the early stage. So we, we typically see a lot of students coming to us with, with a great idea that they want to work on. And they, they're constantly coming to us and saying, I've got this idea, but I don't know what to do next. I don't know what to do with this idea. How do I know that it's a good idea that I should be spending time working on? And so we really focus a lot of our programs around that early stage entrepreneurial development and developing those entrepreneurial skills. Because a lot of times their first idea may not be their great idea, but they can hopefully learn some of the, the skills and the tools that they can later apply to, to other ideas. Because I think the average age of, of an entrepreneur or someone starting their business is, I think it's like over 40 or, or over 50 or something like that. So, so it's not typically the age of, of your typical undergrad student that you would see here, but we try to give them the tools that can really help them learn about the skills of entrepreneurship and starting a business so they can they can apply it later in life too. Fantastic. And I'm going to ask you in a second about some of the specific training programs you've, you've got off of there, which look great. But you mentioned something about the age of the entrepreneur. You're right. According to Forbes magazine, the average founder is 42 mm-hmm. now, you know, and typically comes from a, a job situation, an employment situation, and they're usually well-educated as we talked about. But I have a sweet spot and a, and a passion for, for young entrepreneurs, too. I've done a lot of work in my past uh, with young entrepreneurs. And while they don't have the experience that someone who's older does coming into it, they've got that enthusiasm and energy. Oh, such an important asset <laughs> compared to me, the old guy, you know, and just the optimism. So they, they lack a lot of connections, of course. They lack, of course, money. But with your help, they're getting the skills, they're getting the training, they're getting all these other great things, coupled with that wonderful energy and optimism. So it's great to see. Now, listen, you've got some great programs there. And as I understand it, it's kind of a something for everybody, no matter what their stage in entrepreneurship. So maybe you can expand on these a bit for me. Navigate and Linkubator and, and, and those ones. 
Yeah, so so we run Navigate is is probably one of our most most popular programs. And so that program is is all about all you need to have is an idea that you want to work on. So again, as I was mentioning, we we have a lot of people come to us who say, you know, I've got this idea and I, I don't know what to do next. You know, is it a good idea? Should I dedicate time to working on it? And so the Navigate program is, is all for helping people validate their business idea. So, you know, is it a feasible idea? Is it something that you should dedicate time and resources to? And so how the Navigate program works is, is we, we cap it at about 25 people. We run it every semester here at Brock. And so we bring in a cohort of entrepreneurs. Again, it's open to, to anyone, students, faculty, staff, community members can, can come in and access the program. It's free. There's no cost to, to attend. And so the program's based off of the lean startup methodology. And we, we use some really great resources that have been created by Steve Blank, his how to build a startup program. And so, so that's an open source. It's, it's free off of Steve Blank's website. It's a free course on Udacity. And so we use those videos to, to help students learn about the business model canvas. And we, we spend some time digging into really things around value proposition, customer segments, their revenue models, and we we try to work towards helping them get that product market fit, which is which is really hard to do. And we see a lot of students struggle with, you know, thinking that, you know, everyone's their customer and everyone's going to be interested in this in this product or service. And so the first half of the program gets them working through the business model canvas and, and thinking about their customer segments and value proposition. And then the second half of the program, they, and this is a big term that Steve Blank uses, is, is getting out of the building. So you're going out and you're talking to customers and you're finding out, is anyone other than you interested in your product or service and are they willing to pay for it? And so with that comes a lot of great insights and, and people start to learn like who their customers are and, and who would be willing to pay for their product or service. And so the key part of the Navigate program is, is most of the in-person, so we run weekly in-person sessions as part of that cohort. With the in-person sessions, they watch the videos in advance, they, they do some work, and then for the in-person sessions, they're actually in a small group with a mentor. And so they talk about what they did over the past week, insights that they've gained, they get feedback from their mentor, but also some peer-to-peer -peer feedback, which can be really useful as well. And so we say our, our mentors are really our secret sauce that, that helps our program run and, and really get the entrepreneurs moving forward with their ideas. We've been, been really lucky to find some great mentors who really enjoy working with those early stage startups and work to encourage them, but also give them some, some good advice to keep them on the right track. And then we end that program with a small pitch competition for, for those participants. And so, so it's a great program, again, because anyone can participate. You just have to have an idea that you want to work on. And we see some really exciting ideas that, that come out of that program. And so once people complete Navigate, they can move into our Blueprint program. And so that is a prototyping program that we offer for both physical products as well as digital products. And so that is for entrepreneurs that are looking to develop their first prototype, get to their MVP, get things like their tech packs created so that they can move forward to look at getting manufacturing quotes and ultimately be able to collect more feedback from their customers on their prototype. So it takes them through developing low fidelity to high fidelity prototypes. This program we're actually just launching for the first time this coming August. The great thing about the Blueprint program is again, we bring in some of those industry experts to provide mentorship, um, but also provide support with the development of their prototype. So we're, we're quite excited to be, to be launching that program coming up in August. And then depending if, if people can move through the Blueprint program, or they can just jump into the Linkubator program. And that's our program for startups that have recently launched or they're getting close to launch. That program is a series of workshops. Mentorship comes along with that as well. We keep it to be a small cohort of entrepreneurs. We have about 10 entrepreneurs part of that program right now. And so we keep it small so they can get that personalized and tailored support throughout the program. They get access to desk space that we have here at the Brock Link. And it really worked to support them to, to launch and think about what their future plans and goals are for their business. So it's really a progression you're offering of, of different supports. I didn't realize that. So I can come in with my idea and uh, you guys will set me up with a nice path. 
Or even if I don't have an idea, you can probably help me with ideation as well. Yes. Yeah. We, we do some, some earlier stage workshop series around our, we call it our kickstarting entrepreneurship program. And that's for people who are maybe just thinking about learning about entrepreneurship or they're interested to learn more. That one's a, a less intensive program. It's more information sharing. And so we really try to encourage that, that skill development, because even if they decide at the end of you know, the Navigate program, you know, entrepreneurship isn't for them, th that's okay too. Yes, it is. You're right. That's uh, one of the basics for the podcast. You know, it's not for everybody, but we want to give you some information so you can decide. Now, the Kickstarter program, I saw lots of different sub workshops like exploring entrepreneurial mindset and right. And this is all free, isn't it? Is it? Yes. Yeah. So, so the Kickstarting Entrepreneurship Program, those workshops, they're, they're free to, to access. We run those in person as well as you can join hybrid online. And so we do, which we, it's a variety of topics. They're all standalone workshops. So you could attend one, you could attend all of them really depends on, on your schedule and flexibility, but we focus on things like the entrepreneurial mindset. We, we actually do an assessment as part of that workshop where people can start to identify some of the top skills that they have when it comes to being an entrepreneur and what are some of the skills that they may need to work on. And so it looks at things like comfort with risk, communication, some, some really, I think it's eight or nine skills that they've identified as part of the entrepreneurial mindset that successful entrepreneurs have. And so it gets them starting to think about like, what are the skills that you need to have to be an entrepreneur and, and what are some of the ways they can practice and develop those skills? So, so that's one of the workshops. We also do workshops on market research and understanding how to how to do market research. We do some general workshops on sales and marketing, pitching your business, writing a business plan, steps to starting a small business. So thinking about all of the, the things when it comes to, you know, incorporating your business, insurance, what you need to think about from that that practical legal side of your business. And then we do a, a session on on lending and what it looks like from if you're looking at going to to a bank to get funding, you know, what are the things that you need to prepare and what are the things that you need to know and think about if you are looking at, at going to a lending institution. Wow, that's fantastic. You know, many years ago I had a program company I co-founded called uh, BizLaunch, and we had a program called Up and Running where we trained new small business owners and aspiring business owners, very short though, 30 hours, how to get your business up and running and covered a lot of those topics, but I'm sure you guys do them in a lot more in-depth. And, and it's important that entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs know what they're getting into. As usually like, when I talked to it before we went live, this is a big commitment, isn't it? Yep. And it's, and it's not for everybody. And so we try to, especially for, for our students here on campus, Now's a good time to to explore entrepreneurship. You know, if you if you don't have a lot of financial commitments or, or sort of life commitments, being a student is is a good time to explore those opportunities. And even if they decide, you know, that their their first idea isn't their great idea, hopefully they can take the skills that they learn, for example, through the Navigate program. You can apply those to to any idea that you have at any time. But I think a lot of those skills, like when we think about, you know, having an entrepreneurial mindset, those skills are all transferable into whatever career you choose, right? Like being able to, to have strong communication skills, comfort with risk, being able to, you know, persuade people into whether you're in a sales role or whatever it may be. There's so many transferable skills. So if they can learn some of those skills and develop those skills by participating in our programs, you know, it can help them be successful in other ways no matter what type of business they go into. Mm -hmm. And that's so important because sometimes we come into this, this field of entrepreneurship thinking one thing and end up going in a slightly different direction. We call that a pivot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, someone coming into your, your suite of programmers might say, well, I started off thinking with this idea, but really maybe that's not so good. I'm going to go into that idea. But meanwhile, the skills you're helping them nurture are, are universal. You mentioned something else there too. Oh, about testing the product. So important, right, to make sure that you've got that market. I know you guys really emphasize that in your in your journey with entrepreneurs. Let's make sure there's market demand because, frankly, a lot of small businesses fail because they didn't prove market demand. The entrepreneur gets very excited. I know I've done that to myself. And you launch a business and you go, hmm, no one's buying. This is a problem. But you guys are helping with that. Yeah, we, we try to focus a lot on that that market research aspect and, and really around that customer discovery. 
it's hard work to do. And it's probably one of the, the hardest things to, to do. Go out and talk to customers and get feedback on your idea. Because again, you learn quickly that not everyone's your customer and that not everybody's interested in your product or service or not everyone's as excited about it as, as you may be. Um, but it's a really critical step. But we, we typically see a lot of people jump over it. They jump over it and they, they think, okay, this is great. Everybody's going to want to buy this product or service. But if you don't spend time doing that fundamental work, you don't want to launch and then figure out after you've launched that you don't have the right customer segment or that no one is interested in your product or service. It's better to figure it out early before you even spend time getting too far in that development process. And so we really try to help students understand it and, and our part program participants. And when they do and when you see it click, it's a great learning opportunity and it's great to see when people finally understand it and know why it's important. So it's, it's a really core part of, of what we do with the early stage entrepreneurs that we work with. And you mentioned something a minute ago about helping them test it over and over again. It's not just classroom studies here. We're talking a lab, like you've got a 3D printer, you've got a podcasting station, I believe. Tell me some of the other features, some things I can pull off physically in there. Yeah, so all of our programs and activities that we run are, are outside of our academic programs here at Brock. So we're all, well, we'll say extracurricular activities. They're not getting any credits or it doesn't count towards their degree. So all of the students and program participants, you know, they're here because they, they want to be here. They're interested in it. They're not doing it for a, for a grade or as part of their class. So within our BrockLink facility, we've got a lot of open desk space. We've got co-working space for our entrepreneurs to, to come and utilize the space. And then we also have our maker space, which is run by our library here on campus. It's quite an impressive facility. We've got a, a podcasting studio. There's equipment in there to do recording. There's a drum kit. There's a whisper booth. There's a videography studio. And so there's everything from, from sewing machines to cricket machines to 3D printers. There's lots of opportunities for, for students who are looking to, to build and create things. And so the Makerspace is a great resource for people to, you know, instead of going out and buying that equipment or that technology, you have the opportunity to, to learn how to use it, to test it before you go out and, and buy something on your own. So, so I know the podcasting studio is, is quite heavily utilized by our students here. The 3D printers are, are some really cool projects coming out of there as well. So some exciting stuff is happening with, with our makerspace. Now, what's a whisper studio? Uh, so that, I believe, it's, it's for when you're rec doing voice recordings. It takes out any background noise and things like that. It makes really crisp sounds. Jeez. All these great resources. And this is touches upon a larger subject, you know. This is what I call the era of the entrepreneur. There are so many resources available, like Link, to help people get into business if they want to explore it, whether it's municipal government. I mean, here in Toronto, there's, there's food incubator kitchens, there's startup programs, there's funding available at the provincial, the federal level. There's all kinds of resources out there for entrepreneurs of all age. If you just look, right, there's a lot of support out there. Definitely. There's a lot of support and, and really, I mean, across Ontario, across Canada, especially at, at universities and, and some colleges, most universities have, a, have an incubator similar to the Brock Link. Some of them focus in specific sectors. Some large universities have, have more than one. For students and young entrepreneurs in particular, there's a lot of great resources available on their, on their campus. And so we all do a lot of the similar things, but we, you know, we have our own university campuses or our own geographical regions. But there's a lot of great resources for, for entrepreneurs available that they can tap into. And a lot of times they're, they're free. Like there's, sometimes there's no cost to access the services or, or pretty low cost to, to access the services that are provided. We work very closely locally. We have a lot of great partners that work to support startups and entrepreneurs as well. So everything from our, our local regional innovation center to our, our enterprise centers who support our, our traditional lifestyle businesses. We have a local angel network here. And so we, we work hard to make sure that if an entrepreneur comes to us and they're not the right fit, they in with a local resource who can help them as well. So many fantastic resources out there. And a shameless plug too, if listeners want to check out unsureentrepreneur.com slash resources, I've got a list of 
links on there. I should put a link to your program on there as well. In fact, I'll do that because, uh, you know, there's such an amazing ecosystem out there of support. It's a great time to consider starting a small business. Tell me a bit about some of the success stories and the types of businesses you're seeing get going in there. It must be fascinating. Every year, and we were saying this the, before we before we started. I mean, you know, we run the same program sometimes year after year, but but the the students and the participants always change, so it always keeps it really fresh and interesting to see who comes into our our programs each year. And so, so I've been here for for just over eleven years, probably almost twelve years coming up now, and so really been lucky to work with probably hundreds of of entrepreneurs over my my time here. You know, some of them go into their their own careers and decide entrepreneurship isn't for them. But we we do see a number of entrepreneurs that are moving forward with their ideas and and really working on some exciting stuff. So we don't have a specific sector that we look to support. We work with everything from your traditional lifestyle businesses all the way to to your tech startups that are emerging. And so one of our success stories, and they actually come back and provide a lot of great mentorship for us is a virtual reality company. They provide virtual reality training simulations, and they work a lot with different educational institutions and and different organizations to provide virtual reality training. One big project they're working on right now is around helping to to train firefighters so that they're able to, to do that virtual reality training, to provide them with additional training and more training to help them get prepared. And so they're working really across North America with some some really great organizations. We have had some of our entrepreneurs, you know, pitch on Dragon's Den and, and pitch for investment. We've had one recent Brock alumni who who pitched on Dragon's Den, who is developing safety wear for workers who are working at heights. So it's developing a jacket where people can wear their harness underneath the jacket, put their jacket over top. In Canada, obviously, we've got lots of cold weather so that they're able to, to work more safely at heights by wearing a jacket and, and having a harness and protecting them if they do fall. That's another one. We're also working with another company that works to help nurses find employment. So recent graduates from, from nursing programs or different opportunity for nurses to help them find different employment opportunities. So, so lots of really cool, cool businesses that are coming out. That's fantastic to hear. And Wow. Just some of the ex- examples you provided are so fascinating. I get, I get excited when I hear a cool idea. The jacket for the window washers, that's fantastic. This is why it must be so rewarding to do what you do. You get to deal with new people every year. You get to see all these great ideas. Let's drill down. What do you love most about your job and the people you work with, Cassie? That's a great question. And you know what? I think that it is whether it's its program alumni or Brock alumni, when I run into them years later, and whether they're you know running a successful company or they're they're working in their career, I do love hearing that if if we could play a small part in in their success of their company or they made a great connection when they were part of a program or connected with a mentor or connected with a co-founder at one of our networking events to feel like we played a small part in their in their success or the growth of their company. That's the stuff that I really enjoy hearing about. No doubt. And they'll remember your contribution years back. You should feel good about that. Now, you mentioned something there, too. You've got a pretty active community around you, right, of of, of investors and the entrepreneurs themselves and the mentors. Tell me a little bit more about how that works and are there specific events happening? So with a lot of our, our programs, we try to, you know, bake that mentorship right into to our programs. And so we try to bring in a variety and a, a different group of, of mentors. But we've, we've actually found a lot of success with our mentors is bringing in entrepreneurs who maybe graduated five, six, seven years ago and bringing them back to, to mentor our, our student entrepreneurs and our young entrepreneurs, because we were finding that, um, you know, they, they haven't been out of, or they, their startup has launched in the last couple of years. They're much more connected into the activities that those young entrepreneurs are working on, you know, their business model canvas, working on putting their pitch presentations together. They were there not too long ago doing all of those things. And so we find there's a lot of really great connections. Students can relate to those recent graduates. And so we've been able to to be fortunate to have some of those entrepreneurs come back and mentor with us. And I found that students and participants have been quite engaged to, to meet with them and connect with them. 
So we have mentors that are specifically part of our programs. And then we also have some general mentors, our, our entrepreneurs and residents, who any of our general BrockLink members can connect in with. And so if they're looking to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, they've got some specific questions, they can go to those mentors as well and, and get that advice. So we try to bring in mentors with whether they're industry experts, you know, lawyers, accountants, or whether they're entrepreneurs themselves who can provide advice to to our student entrepreneurs. We try to try to provide that that service as well because it's it's really valuable to have that mentorship. Sometimes it's it's better than you know I can I can talk to them and, and tell them different things, but sometimes it's always good to hear it from a mentor as well. Absolutely, and shout out to our mutual friend Albert Luke, who brought us here together today. I know yes. Albert came in and spoke to your entrepreneurs not too long ago. Thank you, Albert. This is so fascinating, and I, I could talk to you for a lot more longer than we have. But watching the clock here, Cassie, I'm going to ask you, you know, some closing advice for entrepreneurs. So, with all the people you work with, and all the folks you see coming through the the center. You know, someone who's just at the very beginning of their journey, contemplating entrepreneurship. Can you share a piece of advice for that aspiring entrepreneur? You know, I think a piece of advice is, is really around finding that problem and really understanding the problem that you want to solve. I think that's a, a really big piece when you're, when you're starting out being an entrepreneur. Find that problem that you want to solve and then go find out who has that problem too. And that uh, I think is some of the some of the great first steps to to be thinking about when if you're thinking about entrepreneurship or you're thinking about starting up a business, really think about that problem that you want to solve for for people. So that's a big one. And then also to sometimes you just got to go do it. You can spend a lot of time, you know, planning and thinking about an idea, but sometimes you just got to go do it. Both great pieces of advice. Avoid paralysis by analysis. <laughs> just do it. And solve a problem, right? We can't just get excited like I've done based on an idea I want to bring to market. You got to really make sure you're solving an actual problem out there. Thank you so much. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time we have. But I want to thank you very much, Cassie Conte, for sharing your experiences and talking about Rock Link. It means a lot to me and to the audience. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me on, Roger. But before you go, if someone wants to get in touch, what's the best way to connect? You know what? I would say for, for people to, to find me on LinkedIn. Okay. And that's easy enough to do. I'll put the uh, name in the show description, Cassie, C-A-S-S-I-E, Conte, C-O-N-T-E. Wonderful. Thanks again, Cassie. And to our listeners, thank you so much for being here and be sure to return next time for more insights on The Unsure Entrepreneur. Bye for now. That's it for this episode of The Unsure Entrepreneur podcast. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss other candid conversations with small business owners. And be sure to check us out at unsureentrepreneur.com.